on World News Tonight. Battle for Donbas. Thousands more Russian troops are flooding into Ukraine with major world leaders pledging to send more artillery to Ukraine. Mandate lifted. American travelers celebrate as they ditch their face masks. However, confusion still rises as some major cities still require masks. Partygate fines. Boris Johnson set to apologize for breaking his own lockdown laws when he makes his first statement to MPs. And ice lollies for all. Just like everyone else, animals at Mexican Zoo enjoy the ice cold popsicles to battle the heat. This is Other Than Our World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. Top stories today is still on the ongoing war in Ukraine. As Russia begins a new phase in its invasion of Ukraine, intensifying its offensive against the country's eastern Donbas region, global leaders have pledged more military support for Ukraine. They say their common goal is to make sure that Ukraine's military is strong enough to resist Russian aggression. Russia was intensifying its attack on Ukraine's east on Tuesday as it sought a decisive victory in Mariupol, prompting Western governments to pledge more arms and sanctions. Thousands of Russian troops backed by artillery and rocket barrages were advancing in what Ukrainian officials called the Battle of the Donbas. Russia bombarded the Azovstal steel plant, the main remaining stronghold in Mariupol, with bunker buster bombs, a Ukrainian presidential advisor said late on Tuesday, after an ultimatum by Russia for Ukrainian troops to lay down their weapons had lapsed. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky condemned Moscow for blocking any attempts to organize humanitarian corridors and save people. The Russian army will forever inscribe itself in world history as perhaps the most barbaric and inhuman army in the world. Deliberately killing civilians, destroying residential quarters and civilian infrastructure, and using all kinds of weapons including those prohibited by international conventions is already the brand signature of the Russian army. The United States, Canada, Britain, France and Germany on Tuesday pledged more support to Ukraine, including sending heavy artillery and ammunition. Pentagon spokesman John Kirby. I would just say, without getting into uh, what other nations are providing, that they have received additional um, platforms and parts to be able to uh, to be able to increase their fleet size, their aircraft fleet size. I think I'd leave it at that. In Mariupol, a humanitarian catastrophe has unfolded. Tens of thousands of residents have been trapped with no access to food or water, and bodies litter the streets. Ukraine believes more than 20,000 civilians have died there. Russia has denied targeting civilians in its invasion of Ukraine and says without evidence that signs of atrocities were staged. Video released by Ukraine's Azov Battalion purported to show people living in the underground network beneath the steel plant, where they say hundreds of women, children and elderly civilians are sheltering with diminishing supplies. Shells and rockets also hit Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city, officials said, wrecking apartment blocks and other buildings. Officials said four people were killed and 14 wounded. The International Monetary Fund has cut its growth forecast for the world economy as the war in Ukraine and supply chain disruptions continue. It lowered its global growth estimate to fewer than 4% and also forecast large price rises. Prices will rise while the economy is expected to shrink. The International Monetary Fund on Tuesday announced its 2022 world economic outlook and the growth forecast looks dim. The IMF estimated the global economy will grow 3.6% in 2022. That's 0.8% lower than the IMF's previous estimate announced back in January. It's also significantly lower than the global output in 2021, which was more than 6%. The global economy is weighed down by the pandemic, but perhaps even more heavily by Russia's war on Ukraine. Global economic prospects have been severely set back, largely because of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. This crisis unfolds as the global economy has not yet fully recovered from the pandemic. The war has also sharply pushed up prices. 
European consumer prices are expected to rise a whopping 12.6 percent this year. The region's GDP projections for 2022 has also been reduced to a mere 1.1 percent. South Korea also saw its potential growth cut. The country's 2022 outlook was lowered by half a percentage point to a new estimate of 2.5 percent. Consumer prices in South Korea are expected to rise 4 percent. This medium-term outlook bore bad news for all, except for the commodity traders who benefited from price hikes. Russia's invasion of Ukraine could leave long-lasting scars on the world's economy. The war also increases the risk of a more permanent fragmentation of the world economy into geopolitical blocks with distinct technology standards, cross-border payment systems and reserve currencies. The most deeply scarred were the parties involved in the conflict. Russia's economy is expected to contract 8.5 percent. Ukraine is expected to shrink by 35 percent. Thousands of troops have been deployed to South Africa's flood-ravaged KwaZulu-Natal province, where residents are still searching for the missing more than a week after torrential rains began. It's been more than a week since torrential rains hit South Africa's eastern coast, but the search continues for people lost in the subsequent floods. Outside the town of Umbumbulu in KwaZulu-Natal province, police officers and sniffer dogs scour the river. The death toll as of Monday after the rains triggered flooding and mudslides is more than 440. Dozens remain missing. On Monday, the South African National Defence Force said it had been instructed to activate 10,000 troops for tasks including mop-up work and transporting aid. The floods have left thousands homeless, knocked out power and water services and disrupted operations at one of Africa's biggest ports, Durban. The government has declared a national state of disaster. Meanwhile, the U.S. point man on North Korea affairs sat down with officials of the Moon administration, including the ministers of foreign affairs and unification, to reaffirm their country's commitment to collaboration with regard to security concerns on the peninsula. The United States Special Representative for North Korea, Sung Kim, met Tuesday morning in Seoul with South Korea's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Chung yi yong and according to the ministry, they discussed ways to manage the tense situation on the Korean peninsula. Chung reportedly stressed the importance of a strong joint defense posture and mutual cooperation to bring North Korea back to the negotiating table. The U.S. envoy agreed and also emphasized that North Korea's provocations should be met with a strong response. He reaffirmed, though, that the U.S. is open to talks with the North without preconditions. In the afternoon, Kim met with Unification Minister Yi Nyong. Minister Yi stressed the need for peace and stability in the region by continuously working together in the search for a diplomatic solution to North Korea's raising of tensions. Kim reportedly thanked Yi, who'll be leaving office soon, for his cooperation while in his post and told him, too, that the U.S. is open to dialogue with the North. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back to World News Tonight and let's move on to the COVID updates around the globe. Hong Kong's strict quarantine policies have been criticized for damaging the economic and mental health. Environmentalists say that they also hurt the environment by generating excess waste. From remote controls wrapped in cellophane to pillows encased in plastic bags, right now new arrivals into Hong Kong are met by single-use plastic everywhere they turn. The city is one of the few places that holds to a zero COVID policy, which means travellers are required to quarantine in a hotel on arrival. The policy has been criticised not only for the impact on mental health and the economy, but environmentalists say it also leads to excess waste. Skincare entrepreneur Clementine Vaughan flew into Hong Kong this month. All the kind of surfaces that typically you would touch with your hands, like the phones, the, the remote controllers, um, everything's been cellophane wrapped. According to government figures, Hong Kong disposes of more than 2,300 tonnes of plastic waste every day. 
and with a recycling rate of just 11 percent, most of it ends up in landfill sites. This disposable face mask is made of plastic and over time it will eventually become microplastics and will get into the ocean. Edwin Lau is an environmentalist from the charity The Green Earth. He says Hong Kong's approach to COVID reflects its lack of environmental awareness, arguing that plastics from quarantine hotels should be reused or recycled. People living in the quarantine hotels, they are not confirmed cases. They are coming from overseas, so they need to quarantine before they can go back to the uh, community. So what they have used, just like any normal person, they're clean. Hong Kong's strict quarantine policies are intended to halt COVID-19 at the border. A government spokesperson said officials were aware of a surge in disposable waste since COVID began and urged people to adopt a green lifestyle as far as possible. With USA on track to reach 1 million COVID-19 deaths within the next few weeks, a face mask has been the flashpoint of anxiety and frustration of many. There are mixed messages in the United States as the mask mandate was abruptly lifted, but some major cities remain to continue with the restrictions. The Biden administration on Tuesday said it would appeal a court order lifting mask mandates on public transportation if health officials said it was necessary. This decision comes after a federal judge in Florida ruled that the mandate was unlawful. Earlier in the day, U.S. President Joe Biden said it's up to them when asked if Americans should continue to mask up on planes, trains and taxis. At Reagan National Airport, where the majority of passengers were still wearing masks, all major carriers, including American Airlines, United Airlines and Delta, immediately relaxed their mask restrictions along with Amtrak. Ride-hailing companies Uber and Lyft on Tuesday also scrapped the face mask mandate for both their riders and drivers in the United States. U.S. health officials just last week extended the mask mandate by 15 days, saying they needed time to assess the impact of a recent rise in COVID-19 cases. But a Florida district judge appointed by former President Donald Trump said Monday that the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention had exceeded its authority with the mandate, had not sought public comment, and did not adequately explain its decisions. In response, a U.S. administration official said that while the agencies were assessing potential next steps, the court's decision meant CDC's public transportation masking order was no longer in effect. Mask mandates, especially on planes, have been a consistent source of tension. The Federal Aviation Administration said that since January 2021, there have been a record 7,060 unruly passenger incidents reported and 70% involved masking. Johnson & Johnson said it could no longer provide a forecast for sales of its COVID-19 vaccine as vaccine hesitancy in low-income countries paired with already low demand in high-income nations has led to a glut of supply. Johnson & Johnson on Tuesday said it would stop forecasting sales of its COVID-19 vaccine J&J's vaccine has fared poorly compared to rival vaccines due to low demand in the U.S. and manufacturing concerns. J&J said uncertain demand and a global supply surplus of other COVID vaccines was the reason for suspending the forecast. Overall first quarter sales of $23.4 billion slightly missed Wall Street estimates, which the company's CFO said was, quote, really around the COVID-19 vaccine adding, quote, there was just a disconnect into how the street assumed it was going to play out over the year. J&J also warned that supply chain constraints in its consumer health unit would hit sales of its skin health and beauty products for the rest of the year. Despite all this, shares of the world's largest healthcare conglomerate rose as much as 4.5% in Tuesday morning trading. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson issued a two-minute apology to the UK Parliament following a fine from authorities for breaking COVID-19 rules. This comes after Johnson and Finance Minister Rishi Sunak were fined by the police last week for gathering on his birthday in June 2020. 
The Prime Minister said that he has paid the fine but claimed he didn't know he was in breach of Covid lockdown rules at the time. He also denied deliberately misleading Parliament over the issue. PM Johnson also urged MPs to instead focus on urgent matters in Ukraine. On Thursday, lawmakers are set to hold a vote on whether Johnson should be investigated over allegations he deliberately misled Parliament as he had initially claimed that he had followed Covid-19 protocols. Many investors, analysts and investment bankers expect Twitter Inc's board of directors to reject Elon Musk's $43 billion acquisition offer in the coming days as inadequate. Discussions are already taking place to how the social media company would then proceed. Elon Musk has offered to buy Twitter Everyone. for $43 billion in cash. The social network's board of directors is currently evaluating the bid. Many investors and analysts say a rejection is likely, barring any changes to the offer from Musk. Here are some options available to Twitter's board should it decide to turn down the offer. The first option is to buy more time. Twitter's board may decide not to engage in sale talks with Musk and instead give more time to its new CEO, Parag Agarwal, to meet the company's operational targets. The board has adopted a one-year poison pill that prevents Musk from owning more than 15% of Twitter without its consent. Agrawal succeeded Jack Dorsey at the helm of the company at the end of November. The chief executive said in February that he was sticking with the ambitious goals that the company announced in 2021. Those goals include reaching 315 million average monetizable daily active users and generating at least $7.5 billion of annual revenue by the end of 2023. The second option would be to try to negotiate with Musk. Twitter can offer to open its books to the Tesla boss, hoping that this would lead to a better offer. This would test Musk's description of the $54.20 per share bid as his best and final offer. The world's richest man has amassed a net worth of more than $260 billion, according to Forbes. Musk has not specified how much of his own fortune he would be willing to contribute towards a deal to acquire Twitter. Twitter's board can also explore strategic alternatives, such as soliciting bids from other parties. The benefit of this option is that it would identify a better deal, or puts pressure on Musk to raise his offer. The downside is that it could raise the hopes of many investors that Twitter will sell itself. That could pressure the company to negotiate from a position of weakness given that its shares are trading at just a little over a half of what they were over a year ago. It's also possible that any alternative transaction that Twitter opts for would not be an acquisition. In 2020, the company agreed to sell $1 billion in convertible bonds to private equity firm Silver Lake. Twitter could choose to pursue a similar deal now, raising more cash and avoiding an outright sale. Welcome back to World News Tonight. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Global streaming giant Netflix reported losing subscribers for the first time in more than a decade and predicted more contraction in the second quarter. A rare miss for the company that has been a reliable growth engine for investors. Two bomb blasts at a boys' school in the Afghan capital Kabul have killed at least six people and wounded more than 20. A nearby tuition center was also targeted in a grenade attack. There was no immediate claim of responsibility. Islamic State militants have attacked the area in the past. Carmaker Stellantis said it was suspending production on its Russian plant due to logistical difficulties and sanctions imposed on Moscow. The United States has said North Korea is relying on illicit activity, including cybercrime to develop weapons of mass destruction and ballistic missiles, as it works to evade UN and US sanctions. Johnny Depp took to witness stand on the US defamation trial where he accuses his ex-wife and actress Amber Heard of ruining his career with false accusations of violence during their relationship.
And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. In case you have missed to watch any of the stories we aired tonight, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash English. We're leaving you tonight with visuals of jaguars, tigers and monkeys receiving a cold surprise to help them cope with the high temperatures. Thank you for watching us again. Have a good night.